What are your expectations or to be one of the European shooting stars now? Uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here in the center of all this attention. Um, I hope to uh, meet nice people and maybe uh, hopefully in the future get a chance to make films in Europe, not only in, in Estonia. So. Estonia is a um, relatively small country and I think a small film industry. Um, how is the situation there for aspiring actors and actresses? I think it's... We have a lot of actors and there's coming more each year but we also have a lot of theatres and uh, Estonia is a really like theatre loving country like we have a million and something people and uh, the last year is like uh, a million people went to the theatre which is quite impressive and unfortunately there are not too many Estonian films being made so I wish there was more of that. What is the government doing to support you or the film industry? Uh, they support us. Like uh, last year, we had this um, Estonia Republic Hundred, and for this big anniversary, the they gave like a unexpectedly huge amount of money to the film. So all the film industry was like blooming, and everyone were like happily making movies. And now, well, the anniversary is over, and now the wallet closed again. So, uh, but we have to like uh, a lot of Estonian movies. They also search for a co-production outside Estonia because otherwise you couldn't uh, you couldn't make this like full budget movies that you want to. What got you into acting? Did you play in a school play? Uh, did you saw a certain film, and then you wanted to become an actress? I've always been in, in love with films, but I never really dreamed of becoming an actress. I always wanted to be the character in the film. If it was a vampire, then I just wanted to be the vampire without the acting part of it. But uh, I, how I got into acting was I accidentally uh, ended up in a high school like a theater class. And I never left somehow. It was something totally new for me and I've been... It's still so interesting and like intriguing for me. So you appear in several productions of theater, No uh, 99, and which I haven't seen any productions. So can you talk a little bit about what they are doing? Uh, about theater 99. Aha. Uh -huh. I uh, well, it's a theater that started. Uh, I think 40, 14 years ago. They had this. Um, they had this vision that they were going to do 99 performances and then stop. And I, I was part of that ensemble almost five years, which was like five years of really intense and beautiful, creative uh, working. And uh, we also traveled a lot in Europe and performed in Berlin, for example, and Rome and everywhere. And that was really... Uh, really good experience. You did that right after art school. How did you get into the theatre company? Uh, my uh, teacher in the acting school was actually uh, the director of that, uh, yeah, of that theatre, so it was uh, straight from school. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about um, November, which um, Got you an award as Best Actress at the Estonian Film and TV Awards. Were you surprised first for the award? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was. I was really happy that they finally created this uh, award ceremony because last year was the first time ever they handed out the like, Estonian Film and TV Awards. And uh, a funny thing happened there, like. Uh, I had two big movies that came out that year, so I was nominated twice. So it was uh, Rea, Rea, and uh, Maiken. I don't know why they like separated me by the films, but that was really strange to be com competing with myself. So that was quite a 
funny <laughs> thing. How did you cut the part in November? I went to I went to a couple of uh, castings. Yeah, I was still in school, and uh, me and some of my course mates were invited there, and and then there was a, a few months of silence, and then I was invited back again, and then. There was also a few months of silence, and then finally the producer called and okay, would you like to do this project? So I was really, uh, really happy they chose me. What can you tell me about the film and your character, Lina? Um, she's this. Um, no, I'll start from that. It's a. Uh, the novel that it's based on is uh, it's concentrated not on Lena as it is the movie, but this um, the father of Hans, the guy helping all the villagers there. But the Reiner he changed it, so he brought the focus to the Lena to a, a female soul and heart, and it was really interested in that. And it's a beautiful like. Uh, idea if you put a girl with a pure soul in a society or in an, an environment that is so greedy and so uh, deceitful and so like really practical there is a practical solution to everything I want my neighbor's goat I'll go make a deal with the devil and I, I get the goat but it doesn't go like that with love so Lena cannot use all this uh, all these things that she knows from this society, but there's this um, growing of a soul that she must go through in order to reach this selfless, pure love. How did you prepare for the role? Uh, did the director do some workshops or gave you kind of a CV, what the character is all about? Uh, we did actually a lot of rehearsals because uh, a lot of those p people who played the other characters, they weren't actors. So they were totally new to this situation that I'm going to read a line, which is not my line, and I'm going to say it to you like I mean it. So we went like through the A, B, C of like basic film acting with everyone. So we, yeah, we did a lot of rehearsals, but mainly I, I just... Uh, I've always been fascinated by this uh, magical, mythical uh, Estonian, like this dark fairy tale world and werewolves. And so it was like a small dream come true for me to like go into this world. Could you improvise your dialogue or talk to the director about certain scenes you wouldn't like to do as he is in the script? Not in November, but I have done it. Like I have uh, analyzed. Like when I feel uncomfortable with some scenes, I usually talk to the director, and we can sort it out. You played uh, three different characters: Mara, sorry for the names, Elena, and Luna Lee in *The Manslayer, The Virgin, and The Shadow*. And it took really a long time to finish. How hard was that? on you? Um, the time gap was really difficult because we, after the second novel, we uh, our budget was empty so we had to just wait a year and I think we even waited like another year, I can't remember now, but we, we didn't really know if we could like end this movie and that would have been really sad but I'm really happy that we managed it, but uh, the director Sulev He's uh, one of the most amazing directors I've ever worked with because when I when I started filming that I was still in school and I I went on my first uh, first uh, filming day without knowing what's a shot what's a take who, who's an AD I like knew nothing and Sulab was really delicate he was really like uh, really trusting me we basically worked like. We said hello in the morning and we said thank you, good night in the evening and in between we were just like 
somehow uh, feeling each other. So that was a, a magical experience for me. What uh, scene did you first shoot for this film? I I remember it was the it was a scene where I ran with the socks across the field into the cold November river, and I remember I was like uh, I had a fever and I was really sick that day, and I was really worried that oh I might die, but hopefully not. But it was in the end it turned out good. Um. How about your acting? You do theater and then uh, film roles. Um, what do you prefer in general? I love them both. If uh, it would be my dream to continue working in film and theater. You're not very active on social media. You don't have Instagram. I what? do actually. You, you do. Yes. Um, what did you post there? I didn't find you. Ah, I post. Uh, I. I'm also like a hobby photographer, so I I don't post pictures of myself. I just post my photographs. What are your thoughts on streaming services like Amazon and Netflix? Do you see it more as a chance for you as an actress to get a more recognition, or is it harmful for cinema? Um, there are a lot of good things on Netflix and Amazon, but it's uh, it has created like this. Uh, a whole new like uh, platform for movies because for me at some point all the Netflix series and movies started to look the same so it's it, it, it uh, represents a certain kind of taste and a style eventually and uh, although there's a lot of films and different things on there it somehow feels like it's the same <laughs> You met your spouse in art school and you worked with him on November and the other film, yes. but not on Scandinavian Silence. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, Remo, who I worked with on Scandinavian Silence, he, uh, we helped uh, this uh, director Marty uh, to shoot this uh, trailer to get some funding for the money when we were in school. And uh, a few years later, he called, like, okay, uh, the film is happening, would you like to come? Um, I don't know, maybe it's Quite just the fact that me and Remo are actually born on the same day. We're not brother or sister, but it just happened. <laughs> uh, are you more critical when you are in the same movie or theater play with your spouse? No, no. no. Is he critical of, of you and says uh, later after the shoot or the play uh, you should have done that and that and... Oh no, 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 no. I, we, we respect each other. Great. Yes. <laughs> What can you tell me about your new film because it's coming out in March? Yes. Oh, it's been a long time since I saw it. I saw, saw like this first cut. It was quite a, a challenging project. Like you put two people in a car in a really static situation and you have this um, it's not like a usual dialogue it's sort of like a monologue like a more uh, more literary so it's like this literature and moving picture and it's a strange combination for a film so it was a challenge to like uh, find this certain point that it works But it was it was fun to do. I I love the challenges. The directors of the films where you were the main role are also <laughs> co-written the script. And did they stay with the script or did they change it because they are written uh, wrote the script and change it before the shoot? Um, Marty with the Scandinavian silence. He. He changed quite a lot because we got together, we read the script and he got some feedback and then he changed a bit, little bit. But uh, the other ones, they pretty much stayed the same. Like we might have changed the dialogue in one or two scenes. But right now I am actually uh, with these uh, new upcoming projects with uh, Drin Rumet and Veiko Unku. Uh, 
like the process started like a few years ago when they came to me with an idea like okay well, I would like to do something like that and I would like to, you to do it so let's get together discuss what so with uh, Trina I have been like uh, involved in the script writing and like the process which is new to me and it's really interesting to like not just to get your lines and like go do it but you're really like uh, more deeply involved with the project. And what is this um, project about? It's um, I can't say much yet but the work title is uh, Dark Paradise. Um, I read an interview with you um, where they asked you about some directors for theater and they said um, he's known as a kind of dictator. Um, what kind of director do you like? A kind of direct, a dictator type or a kind of uh, let's just actors, actors go on? It depends on the project and it, it, it sometimes it's good you know uh, when the director is like really um, really precise and demanding but it uh, it all depends on uh, on this trust that we have like if we have a mutual understanding and we trust each other then uh, I'm okay with the director yelling at me like I want him actually to tell me when I'm like bad so I think it's like a yeah mutual respect and trust. So. Today um, the Berlinale director Dieter Koslik will sign a gender equality pledge. Um, what do you think about it and how is the situation in Estonia? Uh, surprisingly Estonia has quite a lot of female filmmakers which is a good thing and also a lot of as, at, at least for me it seems a lot of female roles because I, uh, I have only been playing main roles and obviously all female and I see them more coming so I'm really happy about that but, but about the yeah. I don't know if like if my husband actually gets more money for, from the shootings that he does than I do I don't know <laughs> I hope not <laughs> I, I hope so <laughs> um, and the other thing is, we had the Me Too debate last year, and how about that? What are your experiences? I have had, uh, I have had the most lovely experiences with all male colleagues that I have had, and uh, yeah, I, I haven't had any of this like bad experiences with no one. Of course, it yeah, it depends whether you don't like the working method of some director and they're later angry at it but I think you should say it right away not suffer through the years and then later it's I think it's also about this trust like when we make an agreement to make some film and we agree on like the methods we're creating it then that's like, like a sacred area which I'm not going to like uh, throw mod at later on I I wouldn't do that, but of course every story is different and I don't know those stories.